Tonight, missing in action, White House advisors Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump, the president's daughter and son-in-law, of course, who are also Jewish, publicly silent after the president said this. If you vote for a Democrat, you're very, very disloyal to Israel and to the Jewish people. Those comments widely criticized as playing into an anti-Semitic trope of accusing Jews of due loyalty, something that has been used for a long, long time to belittle Jews. Out front now, Keith Boykin, former Clinton White House aide, and Rob Astorino, a member of President Trump's 2020 re-election advisory council. Guys, thanks for being here. Keith, Ivanka and Trump are known to be strategic in how they weigh in and how they give the advice to the president. And we know that that definitely isn't always done publicly, as no one should expect it to when they disagree or need to course correct the president. But why do you think they're choosing to stay silent on this? Because it often leaks out. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I don't have any special insight into Ivanka Trump's brain or what she's thinking or her relationship with her dad. But I think I think it's all selective. She chooses to speak out when she feels that it's in her interest to do so. And then she often does so privately or surreptitiously. She leaks a story to a friendly reporter that she actually didn't agree with something that Trump did. But only when it's incredibly unpopular and she realizes that it's not to her benefit for her brand to do so. But on most occasions, she's not inclined to speak out against her father, even as her father makes anti-Semitic statements to the public, even as he calls himself the second coming of God, even as he says he's a king of Israel, even as he looks to the skies and says, I am the chosen one, Ivanka remains silent in the midst of all the chaos and stupidity of the Trump administration. Rob, what do you think of it? <laughs> well, they're on vacation. Let's start with that. They're on a family vacation in Wyoming, and she's putting that on Instagram. And I think if you go back in time on some of the, quote, controversial things, I think they are back, though. And regardless, when you're working yeah, for the White House, I talk to any administration. You're never, I don't think you're, you're never really on, vacation. Ever on vacation. I know, I know. But you know, they, they are entitled to downtime. And if you look at her uh, Twitter account, she lists in her bio, mother, daughter, sister, uh, wife, and, third, and fifth is advisor to the president. Because she's so, not qualified to be an advisor no, to the president. That's not, she the, that's that's not that. the reason. The reason is, is, you know, they have a life with kids and they're trying to raise their kids. And so you she's not going to comment on everything publicly. Well, having and kids is not an excuse when, for no, your no, no, silence in the, in the face of anti-Semitism. If she has no, something no to say to her dad, she says it in private. And I think that's the relationship that it should be. But some folks inside the White House have conceded to CNN that they think when it comes to this disloyalty remark, it went too far. I mean, it has been widely criticized as a, I mean, you know that is a long time anti-Semitic. Yeah. Don't you agree? I think. Isn't that a crisis moment in a White House? Uh, well, I don't think he should have said things like that. I think he's got to be very, really careful with how he chooses his words. But I think what he meant to say is, and this is true, and this is true that you know, traditional Democratic bloc voters, African-Americans, Hispanics, uh, Jewish voters, you really need to start looking at an alternative. And that alternative is the Republican Party and this president because of what has happened for groups across the spectrum. Everyone is doing better than they were three years ago. And that's the argument How he's, people doing and that's the argument he's gonna make next. Anti-Semitic incidents have increased by 57% since Trump about. became president. You can't blame How are people doing Donald better Trump. when, when people are, are chanting in Charlottesville, chanting, Jews will not replace us, and the president is, is morally ambiguous, threatening that these people might be very fine people. How are things doing better when there's a shooting, I, a mass shooting at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, and the president blames the synagogue for not having guards there to protect themselves? How are people doing better when the president is, is tweeting out anti-Semitic tropes, calling Hillary Clinton uh, anti-Semitic, and, and, and Kevin McCarthy and the, and the and GOP are also engaged in the same things, attacking Tom Steyer, George Soros, and Mike Bloomberg? How are people doing better under those circumstances when we consistently see anti-Semitism and racism and bigotry from the President of the United States and the Republican Party. Is this where we talk about Tlaib Go and Omar and those kind of things? Talk about whatever you no, want. No, and when I was, what I was talking about and what I meant, of course, and I think what he means by this is, look, you need to look at a different perspective. You need to look at a different party because you've been voting Democrat for a long, long time, and you know what? It's 
time you give a different I will look. say, I will and say this. What the president is, up, by the way. is very clear what the president is trying to do is to label the Democratic Party a, a, as anti-Semitic. He's trying to... Well, there's definitely a problem. There's no question about that. Well, well, tell me this. Why there, is are, it, the, every, there are certain every, within members within who have been called out f from within the party about anti-Semitic Well, that's the that problem. They, have they really made. haven't been called out. Well, the, the problem, no, the problem, the leadership. problem is the, the leadership. Abs absolutely they but, have. But may I please pose the question? <laughs> Be, right or wrong, what he's trying to do is to label the Democratic Party as, as anti-Semitic. This right. disloyal remark is, 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 shows that in and of itself. Do you think, do you worry that it can actually have an impact? On the party. Well, no, because I mean, first of all, if there's any fixed principle in our constitutional system, it is that the president of the United States does not get to determine religious litmus tests for people. And you certainly can't set a litmus test that decides that if you don't agree with a particular government or particular administration, that means you are disloyal to your country or you're not being a, you're not being a good member of your faith. Secondly, the Democrats have won the Jewish vote in every presidential election since the creation of the state of Israel in 1948. Hillary Clinton got 71 percent of the vote. Barack Obama got. 78% of the vote. There's no indication that that trend is going to discontinue, especially when you have an anti-Semite in the White House who refuses to do anything when, when anti-Semitic incidents are on the rise in his own administration. Rob. Well, that's projection. Right now, you've got a cancer growing in the halls of Congress, members of the Democratic Party. Some Democratic Jewish leaders have certainly spoken out against what they've seen. And unfortunately, though, when it really came to the rubber meeting the road, they would not specifically condemn them in their congressional. I will say though, it does not help. No. As we leave it here, it does not help though for the Republican Party hearing what you do here from the president on the top. Really quick, because I'm just curious. Do you think Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump? Do you think they have the kind of weight that people try to say that they do I with think, their with the president? Yeah. I think as any son-in-law and daughter would definitely. Mm -hmm. I think they talk in private. They should. Again. Then when there but is a crisis and your and your father you slash it's, it's boss all about is being accused of anti-Semitism, but it's whatever works why. for their right. brand it's not fair is to what they will, what them they to speak will out put against in the public. That's just it's not fair to expect them to speak out against anti-Semitism.